So a little disclaimer before we start today, there is a cicada outside of my window and it will not shut up, so I am sorry if you can hear it. But with that being said, Uther Lightbringer, better known as Uther THE Lightbringer, was struck down by his aspiring pupil after said pupil took up a little sword known as Frostmourne and became king. <sighs> I mean, maybe you've heard of the guy. His name is his name is Arthas. He was a he's a lesser known character in the Warcraft franchise. He didn't really amount to anything relevant. He never raided Forty Man Molten Core back in 04. He never got a tiche either. So I mean, he's kind of a loser. But I do know that you have all heard of Frostmourne, and I also know that you know of its ability to reap the souls of the recently deceased. And for the longest time, we believed that. That when Frostmourne reaped a soul, it took the entire thing. But then just prior to the release of Shadowlands, we learned that Frostmourne can actually split the soul into multiple pieces. And since that day, we believed that every soul taken by Frostmourne were split in a similar fashion. That the Mournblade would reap a portion of each and every soul to consolidate its wielder's power and permanently brand the affected mortal with a mark that may never be healed. But in last week's campaign chapter, chapter 8, we learned that this isn't the case. For in the very first quest we receive after gaining the proper renown, we can find out that a Morn Blade like Frostmourne only severs the soul, splits it into two, when its wielder uses the blade in a fit of anger. To quote the actual text, Uther was struck down by a Morn Blade when such such a weapon is wielded with rage, it can shatter a soul into fragments. If the Jailer holds a part of Uther's soul, it cannot be fully mended until the lost piece is restored. So what we knew before Shadowlands, that a Mournblade consumes the entire soul, and what we learned after, that a soul can split upon consumption, they are both true at the same time. And to be honest, I think this makes a lot more sense and is a better idea altogether because it adds something to the established lore without tossing the old out the window. Frostmourne, or any Mournblade, still consumes an entire soul as was established, but soul sucked in a fit of rage in anything but a calm demeanor ruins the integrity of the process and shatters the soul to bits. And I say this, I say that it fits better because it seems a little uh, overboard to say every soul reaped by a Mournblade splits it into multiple fragments. Because if that were the case, do you know how many souls have been reaped by just Frostmourne alone? There are tons, there are arguably maybe thousands of souls. Thousands of souls would be in the same predicament as someone like Uther, each one requiring a portion of their soul that may or may not be lost to the Maul to be made whole again. But to say that the soul only splits based on the mood of whoever is wielding the Mournblade, it reduces the amount significantly. In fact, we can see just how much it reduces the amount when we go to pick up that missing piece of Uther's soul from Torghast. By my estimate, just re-watching my footage, there's maybe 15, 20 souls in the room, some of which belong to characters we all know, with quite a few, if not every single one, having been victims of Frostmourne. Which fits, because... Well, as we know, Arthas was a very angry dude. He struck down many in fits of rage. Sylvanas, Uther, his father, could even count Muradin on that list, but, uh, but, but he was more collateral damage, and many others. And something else to note about all of this, establishing that the wielder of a sword like Frostmourne must be calm and collected when consuming the souls of the deceased, it gives another reason as to why the Jailer chose Anduin as his vessel. Because Anduin, unlike Arthas, is calm. Seldom does he get angry, and when he does, he usually has regrets. 
So there you have it. What we knew has been restored to canon while making way for a pretty interesting idea on how Reaping Souls is conducted. If you have any questions or comments about this video, Warcraft, or its lore, you can leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to read each and every one of them. Thanks for watching, and remember well.